this up yesterday towards the end of the show. Lane Kiffin's uh, comments to, I believe, Ross Dellinger of SI.com uh, about NIL and the way that you know he sees how that has changed everything. And he is the first coach that I know of. And it's not surprising because he is very outspoken to say that, yes, of course, they're employees. As student athletes are employees, and we should view them as such. He doesn't believe that everything should be equal because that's not, you know, how it works in the pros, but they have free agency without consequences and all these things that the pros uh, have, but it's different. You know, there are consequences in free agency. Your thoughts on what Lane Kiffin had to say about student athletes, uh, in fact, being employees? Um, I mean, I can't really argue with him uh, at this point. Uh, I don't think he said anything that was revolutionary. I think it was more just the fact that that's the opinion of at least one major coach, and uh, not all of them have really gone on the record the way that Lane Kiffin has. Uh, we had the whole dust-up with Saban and Jimbo last week and, you know, got some of the thoughts from them. Saban obviously somewhat threatened, uh, I think, by what's going on, uh, but also wary of what's going on uh, in terms of just the overall game of college football. I think Jimbo could really give two S's about anybody else but A&M, uh, which is fine. That's what he's in charge of, but I don't think he's for one second worrying about the state of college football. Uh, so I'll put them in two different camps, and I know Saban's maybe a little bit of a tweener in there. And I think you got guys like Lane Kiffin who sees the dangers, but just realizes that that's the way that it is now. And so you can talk about it every day on this radio show or whatever. Like I'm, you know, thing with this NIL deal is it, like he says, it's not going away. So, you know, we can talk it to death and all that, but uh, I mean, you just got to get used to it. Uh, and he said, you know, a lot of different things. I mean, I don't have an exact quote in front of me cause it was an interview, but uh, I mean, he just said, uh, you know, basically from the beginning, the players should get paid. They're the ones that are doing the work. Um, you know, what that should, you know, as far as like trying to cap that, he doesn't agree that you should be able to do that. And I don't know who, I mean, really other than just people who are kind of with their heads in the sand still, how you could argue for capping players' money. I mean, that's just asking for another lawsuit. That's just asking for more drama in regards to, to what can or cannot be done. But uh, he talks, you know, basically compares it to the real world and how, you know, they would be treated or paid if they were regular employees in pretty much any other line of work. And, you know, that's a point that I don't really think can be argued because they are basically employees in the eyes of everybody but college football uh, or co college athletics. And so uh, he, he had a few more things to say, but, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, basically cheating has become legal and, you know, you either get with it and get with the Joneses uh, as best you can and try to keep up or uh, you're going to fall behind. And, and what falling behind means in today's game, who really knows? Because falling behind might be just losing football games. Uh, but falling behind might be your school falling off a cliff and ending up in, you know, some different type of system or setup where, you know, you are in a, you know, a tier two where it's not quite the full-blown NIL, everybody, you know, throwing money. Uh, you might find yourself kind of out of that mix. So you either get in or you get out. And uh, it will be interesting to see those who uh, continue pushing this envelope forward. And, and Lane Kiffin will certainly be a part of that. And it'll be interesting to see those who just kind of throw their hands up and say, all right, this, this, we can't compete quite, you know, to this extent, we're going to have to fall back a little bit. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the, that's the end game scenario for, you know, for what will be probably a lot of, of people, but you know, he brings, you know, the, the way that their life works, it works like an employee. If you had a job, you know, you have to, you know, they, they are required to go to class because they're on scholarship for sure, but they're also required to, you know, show up this time and lift weights and you have to, you know, they control your diet, they control everything. So there's a lot of things that would fall into a normal employment contract. And plus the reason that we all buy tickets and watch television, uh, you know, the coaches are a part of it, but I don't, I don't usually turn on the TV to watch the coach coach. I watch, turn on the TV to watch the players play. So, uh, yeah, to some extent, I think you yeah. turn on to watch your school. Actually, yeah, right. I think in most cases, uh, it depends on who you're talking to, but, uh, I think Garrett turns on to watch LSU. I don't think he's turning on to watch like specifically this guy on a Saturday. He's going to watch whether that guy's playing or not. Well, I'm I mean, the players are still part of it though. I mean, yeah, like no. I'm watching the players play. It doesn't matter who they are, but I'm, you know, they're essentially in this scenario, you know, a, a, a rotating, you know, version of, you know, group of employees. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. I mean, I get that. That's my point though, is that you're, you're not tuning yet. Yeah. You're tuning in for the players because there have to be players to play the game. But what I'm saying is people are not tuning in because necessarily of a specific player. They're tuning in because they are an Oklahoma fan. They're tuning in because they're a Florida state fan. Now you might tune in to watch EJ Manuel in particular, 
But are you going to watch Florida State whether EJ Manuel is the quarterback or not? Yeah, I mean that, that's yeah. not that's not what I was getting. At, okay, um, at all. I, I was just saying like you're going to. I'm turning like the players are a key, they're the reason I'm watching the game. Sure. I mean overall together, all of them, not one. I'm not talking about watching. You know, occasionally you'll turn to watch Johnny Manziel because it was wild watching sure. that dude play. Uh, but. You know, you'll watch Herschel Walker or Bo Jackson or somebody like that. But, you know, that, that's Reggie Bush. I was like that. I'd watch Reggie Bush any time because he was, he was just unreal. But um, I'm watching the collective group of players play, which means that they are there, you know, performing for my entertainment. If I was going to see a Broadway play, the Broadway, you know, the actors all get paid. So it's all of that. I mean, everybody gets paid in that scenario. So, uh, I, I mean, that's that's what it is. I mean, basically, I mean, you can agree with the scenario or not, but, you know, on the on the essential framework of it now, he says it shouldn't be equal. And I don't think it NIL should be equal. But I do think if they're going to have employment contracts, I, I'm pretty, pretty sure you could collectively bargain. Freshmen make this much money. Sophomores make this much money on down the line, you know, with an escalating scale, you know, depending on how long you're in school. Um, so... You know, I think that could be like the base salary could all be the same because that's what, you know, that's what, like Nick Saban said last week, everything's always been equal. But when it comes to NIL, that's going to be different because that's, it's different in the pros. Dak Prescott has more endorsements than Tyler Biotish. They play the same amount of plays, but, you know, Dak Prescott's more important and more noticeable. So, you know, that's just how it is. But yeah, I, I think there's some, there's some avenues, especially if you collectively bargain an agreement for employees to to have the same base salary, but there could be incentive incentive clauses or whatever. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, sure, uh, there could. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they do it. Um, this is the part where 